Um, but th- this might be a good segue into our forecasting and talking about that. So, Alex, first, do you kind of just want to discuss what we're expecting, uh, what, what some of the forecasted vote shares are that are on the screen right now, and just like kind of a 90 seconds on the methodology behind it? Yeah, sure. So we've we've been forecasting uh, the Democratic nomination uh, for about a month now. Um, and we're going to keep going through Super Tuesday and beyond. Um, essentially, we have a national forecast um, that gives the probability of a candidate uh, being able to receive a majority of the delegates during the, the course of the primary season. Um, that right now is actually giving about a coin flip chance that no candidate secures a majority. Doesn't necessarily mean there'll be a contested convention, but it just means that there'll be they'll they'll have to be a little bit of wrangling here or there at a minimum before the convention. And there's a potential that it spills over onto the convention floor. Um, State by state, we also have forecasts and those uh, manifest themselves in vote share. So we actually predict what percent of the vote we expect Bernie to get, Biden to get, and all the other candidates to get. Um, And so on the screen right now is the Nevada... um, uh, forecast, and you can see that as of right now, we've got Sanders coming in about nine points ahead of Biden, who's in second. But um, there's this whole cast uh, right behind him, um, and so it's a very fluid situation for second place. Um, this is not our final prediction. We're going to be putting out our final Nevada prediction um, uh, later today, um, or or potentially tomorrow morning if there is a, a late breaking poll. Um, but yeah, that's that's roughly what's going on there. And then South Carolina, same same sort of situation with vote shares. Uh, we do still have Biden up, albeit uh, by a very small margin. One thing that jumps out to me it, with both Nevada and South Carolina numbers are we have quite a number of candidates near that 15% threshold. Uh, here's a question for either of you. What what does that necessarily mean in terms of translating these vote shares into delegates? So on, on South Carolina, for example, we only have two candidates above 15%. And so if my understanding's right, then that's a big haul of delegates that would only go to two people. In the Nevada forecast, we have Sanders quite a bit ahead, and then we have about four candidates who are four, maybe five candidates, all hovering near that 15 percent. Um, what might that mean in terms of translating the vote shares to delegates? Well, first of all, you have to look at it as um, that's a statewide number. Now, obviously, that's going to track closely with, with the county and, and up to the CD level, but it is possible for... Um, a candidate to be viable at the congressional district level and not at the state level to win delegates. Um, and that's also why you're seeing a little bit of, as, as much as I was saying about some of those outlying areas not mattering as much and certainly being significantly smaller, you can you can do more with fewer votes if you focus on them there. Um, so you may see somebody sneak in. But again, you're, also, you're only talking one or two, maybe not even two, because they're so you know, so tightly compact. And Alex has been heading up our delegate stuff. One question that dawns on me, if you had four candidates or five candidates that got the threshold level, could you get a, could the lower one not get any delegates? Yes. Um, yeah. So you, that, that would be, it almost, it almost happened in, in New Hampshire. Um, basically the, the, to, to make a long story short, the, calculation there's two different statewide ones and four and uh and one per congressional district four in iowa that's why that's why i naturally gravitated to four and four in nevada um so you know in iowa for instance klobuchar got one delegate she didn't make the 15 percent threshold statewide but she just barely sneaked in in one of the congressional districts so she got one um since there's so many that could potentially make the 15% threshold, um, it's an extremely volatile situation. Bernie Sanders with 30% of the vote in one state might end up with over 60% of all of the delegates for that state. If, um, if, if there's one other candidate that sneaks in at 15 and then everyone else is just below it, um, or um, at 30% of the vote, he might only get 
35% of the delegates because uh, Buttigieg gets in, Biden gets in, Klobuchar gets in, Warren gets in. Um, and then all of a sudden now he he's getting pretty close to proportionate of what he got as vote share for his delegates. So it's a, extremely volatile when it comes to delegates. And, and we should keep in mind, too, these early states, you know, we're, we're sort of at the midway point of the early. We're, we're getting to the end of the beginning. Um, they're not really about delegates. You're not going to to stake your claim here. The delegates reflect reflect your momentum, really. Um, so the difference in numbers are, isn't that huge, you know, compared to, say, a state like California, again, where um, Sanders has a tremendous lead. There was even a poll showing him being the only one above 15%. Now that was an outlier, but it just shows you sort of the range of possibilities. If Sanders actually somehow managed to be the only candidate to be viable statewide in California, that would be a tremendous haul of delegates. It would, I think, dwarf probably what was available in all of February. Um, so the scale of what we're talking about is going to change substantially as well. Nobody can win the, uh, the number needed on Super Tuesday, but you can build a lead that really becomes hard to to catch up with because of this proportionality, but the the range of potential outcomes really is great when you're talking about a field that's still this large and this clustered around that 15% mark. So are we going to walk into a convention uh, where, Austin, if you hit the national? So right now the forecast, we're saying 48%, no majority. Um, what do we? What do we? What do I take of that? So if it is, let's say it is forty-eight percent, Alex. Um, what's sort of the next steps here from a, a, pra a practical perspective? And what do we? Is there a way we're thinking of some of the mo more likely outcomes if we do get to a world where no candidate uh, receives a majority of the delegates going to the first ballot at the convention? So I think the biggest factor is how. Uh, how close to 50% of the delegates is the leader, which presumably at this point, Bernie Sanders has the, the highest probability of, of being that leader going into it. Um, the closer they are to 50, the less drama that there's gonna be. And then the second most important factor is how close is the nearest competitor to, uh, to Bernie um, or, or to whoever the leader is. Um, the, the further beh behind they are, even if Sanders or someone else are only at 40% of the delegates, if the nearest competitor is at 20%, um, then th that also sort of uh, allows for, co uh, co uh, for the party to coalesce around the leader and not have much drama. Um, so I think all in all, uh, it's more likely than not that we don't end up on the convention floor with some drama. Um, and our and our model sort of uh, uh, reflects that. We've got a 52% chance that someone has a majority. And then uh, within that 48%, there's a lot of wiggle room for stuff to happen. Um, but that's that's essentially, I think, that's my take on it. Looking at the numbers on the screen right now, 48% no majority, 24% Sanders, 12% Buttigieg, 6% Bloomberg, 5% Biden, 4% Klobuchar. Let's ask our favorite question. Who would you rather be? Beyond oh, Bernie. Would... <laughs> Beyond, no, Bernie's uh, got to be a choice, right? Were you were you thinking were you thinking other than Bernie or were you thinking including Bernie? No, no, including Bernie because I mean we're still in a situation where it d depending on what that vote share actually looks or ha that delegate count um, as you were talking about maybe the differential between uh, the majority line and Sanders th and Sanders's vote share um, that that could be the difference as to what determines the tone of the convention um, and so no in including Bernie. Is, uh, are we sort of all in agreement that we'd rather be uh, Senator Sanders, the independent from Vermont? At this point, yeah. Drew? I'm going to play the part of Alex L. Dunson, and I'm going to take Joe Biden. You know what's <laughs> funny? You know what's funny is I was thinking that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, let me build the scenario. Yeah, yeah, please. 
he comes in a strong second tomorrow, and strong being relative because I, I think pretty clear Sanders is going to have a, a fairly comfortable win. He wins. He's not going to win by what people were thinking he would win South Carolina by a couple of months ago, but he's not. But he may win it by more than they were thinking he would a couple of weeks ago. So he's got some reasonable expectations. I think Bloomberg may have had a at a moment. Um, so you start to see some of these other states going towards um, Biden, or at least, you know, he gets a lot of strong seconds maybe in places you didn't think, and suddenly he's back. And if that, you you come out of this, you know, with it being 40 plus or minus 5% for Biden and, and Sanders, you know, Sanders gets to 45 and Biden's at 39, 38% of the delegates. In Milwaukee, I think there's going to be a lot of pressure to go with with uh, Biden. Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely don't disagree with that scenario. I think if you if you look at the national polls, and uh, the the rise in Bloomberg has almost perfectly mirrored the drop in Biden. If you essentially take that that uh, trend and reverse it back, you've got Biden up nationally again. And not by a not by one or two points either. So if comes and if Klobuchar drops out soon, or Buttigieg sort of fades to the back and drops out soon, right? And you know, if you if you if you play that scenario out on Super Tuesday, it's it's a it's a dogfight on Super Tuesday, and and probably neither candidate ends up with um, much of a delegate lead. Um, And so at that point, it's game on. but I think probabilistically, at this point, it's more likely that Sanders does, uh, you know, keep maintain his lead. Um, but but that's definitely a very realistic uh, outcome, I think. All right. Well, that's going to wrap up, I think, our Nevada preview and our look around the field. We hope that you enjoyed it, but also please like, favorite, and do all those things on whichever platform you follow this on, so that. We know you're there. You'll get updates, and um, you'll also be able to see the highlights of the show uh, shortly if you missed anything. We're not going to be doing a live stream tomorrow. Just want to make sure people understand that um, because we really just don't know what's going to happen. And you know, we we did the six hour with no vote thing once before, so um, we, we've got that covered. We are going to do a follow up early next week, and then we will be doing the preview show and Saturday night in South Carolina with the desk. What could be better a week from tomorrow? So that's where we are right now. We appreciate you joining us. Alex L. Dunson, as always, Dr. Alexander Podkul, appreciate all of the, all your time here today. And that's going to do it for us. Uh, thanks for listening. Oh, wait, there's if, more. Yeah, and if you appreciated my Mitch McConnell joke, unlike these two mean guys, leave a comment. Let me know so that I can make more terrible jokes in the future. Uh, in truth in advertising here, please leave the comment, but he's going to make the terrible jokes anyway, regardless. So. It'll be okay. We love the terrible jokes. I don't think Podcool does. All right. Well, we got him outvoted. All right. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Um, We will have results if there are results and when they do come in. As I say, we're not doing a live stream, but we will have them on our page. We'll be uh, putting the links up on Facebook and and our blog, uh, Twitter as well. So you can follow along with all of that tomorrow as things unfold. Um, Until next time, I'm Drew McCoy. Thanks very much for listening to Around the Desk.